Stock education. Between January and September of 2022, Nigerians spent approximately one. $0.3 billion on foreign education. Look at that. That's for the first nine months of last year. However, it's even more. Between 2010 and 2020, that figure was $28.65 billion. Now, there's been a lot of hand-wringing over this, but Nigeria isn't the only nation that spends money on foreign education. Look at the student population. Studying overseas in 2020, $5.6 million projected to grow uh, even further to over 8 million, or almost 8. Top 5 international student populations. The U.S. leads the way, over a million of them and growing. The U.K., 551,000. Canada, China, Australia round out the top 5. So who better to talk to us about this than John Todd, founding head, director of education at Charterhouse Lagos. They've just opened, well, they're opening up a really advanced school here in Nigeria, first of its kind. You're very welcome, John. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so, I mean, studying overseas brings exposure. It brings connections, networking. Is, should there be hand-wringing over what Nigeria spends on foreign education? I, I'd say, first of all, the numbers shock me. Right. I, I, I heard them the other week, but it's, it still shocks me. And I think we perhaps have to look underneath and say, you know, where are those students going? Is it in primary and secondary or is it in tertiary? Um, if a big chunk of that is primary and secondary, I think it's really concerning because at that level Nigeria should be able to look after itself. If it's tertiary, I think there is a huge um, demand across the whole world for students to go in, in, into all sorts of different places. And I think even in the UK now, we're seeing more students go to the US to consider it. You know, it, it, it's a global village now. Right, right. So people are going to different places. But I think the worry for me is so many Nigerian students are leaving at primary school or secondary school level, not because there are not good schools, but they don't have the range of options. Um, and, and in a sense, that's the market niche we've we've seen and are trying to fill that very very high quality education yeah. which is your u.s prep schools um, and then your british independent schools right and you know so many nigerians the family almost or mum has to move to the uk to look after the kids in school yeah that's got to be wrong yeah. um that's something we think you know very definitely we can address but I think the challenge is you, you compare what you get in the UK, the, the US, Dubai, Shanghai, all these places, you don't see that all round quality. Gotcha. There are some great academic schools, mm. um, but there aren't schools that offer everything, mm. which is a normal expectation. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a world city. Right. You know, at the end of the day, mm. one of the biggest cities in Africa, the money is here, but we're not seeing that level of education development. So that brings us to Charterhouse Lagos, mm. sister of, of course, Charterhouse UK, long yes. pedigree. You invest in what, $150 million? That's so right. are, you, are you trying to localize that so you can cut the FX from going out? Tell us, tell, tell us about that. Yeah, the currency issues are, are interesting <laughs> and complicated. Yeah. But I would say that recent events have made our job much simpler yeah. um, with, with all the numbers, the exchange numbers coming closer together. Um, what we want to do is say to people, you know, you can get these things in Lagos. Right. Um, it's here in Nigeria. Why take your six, seven or, or 14, 15 year old over to the UK? Come and have the same level of education here, but that needs the same level of facilities or better. Right. Um, it needs the same quality of teachers. Um, it needs that investment. It's not just about buildings. You've got to invest in the people as well. Um, and putting a development like that in, a, in an area, yes, it, it's going to bring that money in, but then it's also going to spread that money out, first of all, in the local area, mm. because we've got a massive campus. It's 70 hectares. So we need all the people to look after that. Yeah. Security, catering, guards, um, cleaning, all of these kind of things. So lots of jobs for um, the local community, plus a really strong commitment to developing um, these people. Mm. So it's not just let's get them in, do work for us. 
we have this dream for our local staff that you can come in with nothing and go out with a master's degree. That's going to take 10, 20 years for us to make it work. And we've done pieces of work on that continuum before. But we think, you know, Nigerians love to learn. They want to develop themselves. So there's that drive. There's our commitment. We feel in the longer term, we can develop the local community. Great stuff. So uh, there, you've, you've laid it out. You're Charter House Lagos, you're coming mm. in here. Big investment is going to help out with the, with the idea. You've mentioned all the, what you're going to do for your staff and everything, including the students. Um, does, this is it's not cheap. Um, where do you fall in on the conversation around education and whether it should be free or how expensive it should be and so on mm. and so forth? I'm still looking for free education. <laughs> okay. So um, my daughter's at doing free university education in the UK, which yeah. costs me top-up fees, accommodation <laughs> fees, right. this fee, that fee, right. all, all of this. Yeah. No education is ever free, mm. unless you don't pay any tax at all right. and go to a public school. But I, I, I think at the end of the day, what we're doing is giving people a choice. Now, they already pay their taxes, they can go to a local school if, if that's what they want to do. Um, we have a tradition in the UK for, I think our oldest schools go back to about the 5th or 6th century. Yeah. Um, Charter House is only 400 years old compared to some of these schools. Yeah. Um, but you can make a choice and spend more to educate your children in a different way. And so for a parent, you look at it as an investment. And like any other investment, what am I going to get for that investment? If we look at schools and school fees, the school fees determine how much you pay the teachers. How much you pay the teachers very often uh, determines the quality of candidates that you can attract. Right. So very often, UK independent schools pay more, get better teachers. Mm. And you know- It's straightforward. We, we're doing the same thing. We will pay our teachers very well we will also invest significantly in training them. So it's not just give them more money, it's give them the training. Make sure that they can do the job better, that the learning in the classroom is improved. Because, you know, in education, the single biggest factor in student success is the teacher. Right, right. So the more you invest in the teacher, the better the quality of the learning. And you know, the studies that show the teacher is the number one factor. Um, so I think there it's a choice for parents, yeah. you know, is this something you want to do? Mm. It will not work for everybody. Gotcha. Um, there are lots of options. There are lots of different price points. What I think is clear, you know, and our price point won't be all that different from a UK school. Mm. The difference is we are not seven hours away on a plane. Right. We are just up the road. Right. That means your child can come home in the evening. That means you can also take them to church on Sunday. Because I think underneath this, school does some things for children. What it doesn't do is, is really develop their moral values. That is for the family. Gotcha, gotcha. And can you specify, Charterhouse Lagos, what, it's, this is um, primary and secondary, right? Okay, can you, yeah. yeah. So long term primary and secondary, yeah. we are starting with five to uh, nine year olds this okay. year. So yeah. UK year one to year four, maybe we'll add year five into that as well. And then we'll grow our school. We will add secondary school um, that will open 2026 and we'll offer boarding as well for secondary school. We're not offering boarding in primary. We think they should be home with their families. All right. Um, for secondary school, we will offer boarding and you can stay all the time. Yeah. You can go home at weekends. Um, what that allows us that extra time is to develop character, to develop passions for doing other things. Music, sports. All of this, yeah. dance, drama, more study. Right. You know, why not? Yeah. So everyone has something different that they will want to do. And because we have this amazing campus with all these facilities, we can just keep saying, yeah, you yeah. can do that. Because we have the, the music, the art, the drama, the library, the steam facilities, it's all there 
in one place. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, John Todd, we're going to have you back because you have thoughts on a wide range of issues on oh. education. So you are going to be a frequent guest on this show. Thank Happy. you. So, yeah, great stuff. It's always a pleasure talking to you, seeing you again. John Todd, founding head, director of education, Charterhouse Lagos, which opens up next year, right? 2024, right? The first day. September 2024. Fantastic. So thanks for joining us on the show. Appreciate your time. Thank you.